Hey, this is Jamie from Die985, and you're watching Good Company with Bolt. Good Company! Hey guys, my name's Scott Bowling, and you're watching Good Company. Today, I'm with Jamie Robertson. Jamie's got a new band, Die985. Me and Jamie are old friends, so it's good to have you on the show, man. Absolutely. Thanks for asking me to be here. So I love this new album, um, Die985, but uh, before we get into that, let's uh, talk about when did you start, you sing and play guitar. Have you been playing guitar? When did you start playing guitar? Uh, guitar was, are you talking about when I got my first one or yes. actually started trying to learn to play guitar? It was both. Okay, I got, <laughs> it's probably nine or ten, and I got my first guitar. I didn't have a tuner. I didn't know how to play anything. I don't even know what happened to the thing. It probably got like <laughs> <laughs> taken to Goodwill or sold in a yard sale or something. I don't know. Uh, I guess the next attempt was when I was about 15 or 16. Mm -hmm. uh, that's when I actually got a Fender Squire Strats, everybody's first guitar, obviously, yeah. because they're like 99 bucks and your parents <laughs> are not going to spend that much. <laughs> so uh, from there, I started learning power chords and a few scales and that kind of thing. And that's what I use to this day. Yeah. I never um, had any desire to get better. I'm just like, yeah, this is good enough. You know. And actually, me and you like uh, are old friends. Oh, absolutely. And uh, I think I remember when we first met, you were playing guitar. Yes. But our influences, or your influences, were different back in the day. I think we were we were more into like hardcore, like. Still love it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 90s hardcore, the whole Victory Records scene. But yeah. Take yeah. that, for instance. Uh, Blood for Blood, Hate Breed, Snapcase. Was Earth Crisis on there? Earth Crisis was on there. Yeah. 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 So and I remember um, uh, us going to see Stuck Mojo a lot, and a lot of people in yeah. Stuck Mojo have been on the show, which is kind of cool. Yeah, full I know, circle. It's, awesome. it's great. And you know Bones, right? Too, didn't you? You uh, met him one time. I played a couple shows with him through the years. Yeah. Uh, met him a few times, you know, back when I was a kid. And by kid, I mean I was a teenager, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, that's cool. And so um, from there, you took a kind of a long gap from like when was your first band you were ever in? I mean, I guess when I was. I don't know, 16, 17, I was playing in your typical teenager bands. Yeah. We didn't really get a lot of gigs, we didn't record music, that kind of thing. We'd play garage parties or coffee shops or... Uh, the kind of Yeah, the kind of stuff you get when you're that age, <laughs> yeah. you know? It's not anything special, definitely not anything glorious, but that's just kind of a phase that I think everybody needs to go to, so if you yeah. do make it to the next level, you'll appreciate it. Right. You know? And so you're kind of the next level with the, the casket creatures. Right. This is like literally the only copy in existence, right? Or that you I don't know if it's the only in existence, <laughs> Derek. There's two, and I have the other. Okay, well then that makes three because I have one frame. This <laughs> album, yeah, man, this is, uh, uh, let's backpedal just a little bit. In 2008, I was playing with Hex and House Massacre and Ryan was playing in Grey School. Mm, yeah. So we were doing a lot of shows together and that kind of thing and uh, he was working on some songs for a soundtrack to a zombie movie mm. and made a fake band called Brain Buffet. <laughs> so we were kind of talking one day and I was like, dude, that stuff's awesome. That's like what I've always wanted to do, but nobody around here has ever been into that kind of music. So we started talking. He was like, dude, why don't you play guitar and we'll like try to do a live show. And I think we did two. Yeah, it was only two <laughs> ever. And they went terrible because we just kind of recruited people to kind of come in and fill the parts. Yeah. And nobody took the time to learn the fucking songs or anything. <laughs> so it was just kind of a whole mess. But from Brain Buffet, a couple of years after that, probably 2010, if I'm not mistaken, me and Ryan decided to start a horror punk band. Okay. And that horror punk band was the Casket Creatures. We actually started uh, writing songs. We found, uh, I'm not going to say a solid lineup because it's changed like 1,800 times. Yeah. But that was our first album. Uh, to this day, I actually listened to it a few weeks ago. I just go back and do that every once in a while. I think it's a good album, but since it was the first full-length album any of us has ever did, mm -hmm. including our producer, Mac Brown, I know Mac, yeah. Mac Brown Old actually friend. got into recording and yeah. he decided he wanted to record us. You know, oh, cool. all of us and him were all so anxious to get an album out that I felt like it was rushed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? There could have been way more time taken and a lot of things. But that being said, I listen to it now, years later, and I'm like, okay, 
I'm not picking it apart as bad as I did right after it came out. Yeah. Every musician will always be their own worst critic. Right, right. So, I mean, for what it is, it's great. Uh, good luck finding it. How long did it take you to record it? <laughs> it? It was so quick, though. I mean, did, how, how, how fast? I want to say the whole thing was probably done in a total of five days or less. <laughs> yeah. So is it Which hard? It gets even funnier later, but we'll, we'll get to that in a little while. So how, how? So you got your second album right here. Sex, Blood, and Rock and Roll. Yes. This one is. That's the one for me. Okay. Uh, what's I, the? How, how, what's the? This 2013. So 2013. After this album, we started writing again, and we added the addition of Mr. Derek Obscura to the band, and. <laughs> That guy and myself. How'd you have, find that guy? We were playing a Halloween show at Locos in Gainesville. Mm. And he came out to the show to see another band that wanted him to join. <laughs> and then he caught us there. <laughs> and if I'm not mistaken, later on that night, he told Ron, I'm joining your band. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? I'm going to talk with this guy. And me and him talked a lot. And uh, I was like, you know what? Mm -hmm. This is cool because we found a guy that's really close to us. And he's into all the same bands we're into. He gets what we're doing. And so I tell him, I was like, this album was out of the time, unknown. And I was like, go ahead and learn that. And I was like, okay, he's going to start learning the album. And then he's going to come over and I'm going to show him all the parts he couldn't figure out. Well, he comes over to my apartment one day and he had the whole album down and part of the solos, which I didn't even tell him to learn. <laughs> so, awesome. yeah. yeah. So I was like, yeah, this is a. Uh, Who recorded this? this? Is our guy. Was this, did Mac work with you on this one as Mac well? Mac did not work with us on that one. That was. Ty. Ty Watkins yeah. did the engineering and then James Nation did James all the production yeah. and, and the mastering and all that kind of thing. Yeah, these are a lot of songs. Were you um, you wrote all the lyrics and stuff? Not know, this, on this one. Yeah, yeah. This one. Just... Let's see. How many songs did I write lyrics for on this one? Uh, one. I wrote two of the actual tracks, and then one of the bonus tracks. I actually wrote that one too for this album, but it was our most successful song at the time, and we wanted to have a better quality recording of it. Mm -hmm. So we added that as a bonus track on this album, and actually beefed up the production on it. Oh, good. So, yeah. How hard is it to write a song for the Casca Creatures when you are writing? Is this, <sighs> I mean, is it a long process or do you have to get inspired? And I mean, it's... Like with any band I've ever been in, as far as writing lyrics, uh, I mean, I can be out driving around or watching a horror movie mm -hmm. or this, that, whatever, just everyday life stuff. And while I'm doing that, I'm always thinking. And mm -hmm. I might come up with some kind of concept and I'll be like, you know what, that'll make a really cool song. Mm -hmm. Or it might just be a thought or a little line of lyrics or something. And then from there, I'm like, okay, I've got this small piece of a song and I have to write everything else around that. Wow. So I don't know, man, uh, Do songs and you know, there's days I come home and I legitimately feel like sitting down with a guitar and a notebook and mm -hmm. writing songs. And then some days it just kind of comes out of nowhere for me. Yeah. You know, it's not something that's planned, and usually when I do try to plan it, I end up getting frustrated with it and be like, oh, I can't think of a word that fits with this, and then I'll go watch TV or something like yeah. that. So, Yeah, oh, that's cool, man. Um, and then, so, from here, what made you decide, did you kind of, you left Cassette Creatures. I did. And um, you just, talk about your new album, Die985. How did you guys form? Okay, I left the Casket Creatures in 2013, and at that point, I had pretty much decided I was done with music mm -hmm. altogether. Like, you know, I'm getting older now, and honestly, life gets in the way of fun. If I didn't have a kid and a full-time job and adult responsibilities, I never would have left the Casket Creatures. Mm. So I pretty much decided, you know what, I'm washing my hands of all this. I had a lot of fun. I got to do some micro runs, play a lot of shows, meet a lot of cool people. Mm -hmm. I felt content with what I had done with music. Uh, so for a little over two years, I really didn't even hardly touch a guitar, to be honest with you. Mm. And um, Did you miss it? I mean, were you thinking about it? Yes and no. Yeah. I missed the fun, but I mean, obviously, there, it's not all glory all the time being in a band. <laughs> It's like I tell everybody, I'm like, being in a band is like having an extra three to four girlfriends. <laughs> you know how one, one can make you miserable? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, got to, uh, you got to listen to everybody's opinion. 
all the time and then maybe this person doesn't like this and this person doesn't like this and you've got to find a compromise. Yeah. So I didn't miss any of that part, but I miss being on stage. I miss being around my friends, that kind of thing. So. And so when you got this new band, you're singing. So what made you decide to get on the mic and, and do that? Talk about that. <sighs> all right. Let's, uh, <laughs> the way the band started, Ronnie hit me up wanting to do something. Ronnie like, drummer. Ah, yes. Yeah. Ronnie Massey. Yeah. He hit me up wanting to do something. Then I had Brian O'Bot, the rhythm guitar player. Mm. He was also kind of messaged me, do you want to start something new? That kind of thing. And I was like, uh, I started thinking about it. So then I made a group message to both of them. I was like, look guys, both of you have been hitting me up about wanting to do music. I'm willing to give it a shot. This is not going to be too serious because I don't have that in me anymore to put that much time into anything anymore. <laughs> uh, and I was like, and both of you are hitting me up about this and this. If you guys want to try to play some music, let's get together and do it. So those two came over. We jammed a few days or whatever. And right about the time all this was happening, I was actually getting ready to do a reunion for Sex, Blood, and Rock and Roll with the Sex Creatures. The Sex Creatures. The Casket Creatures. Wow. Sex, Blood, and Rock and Roll with the Casket Creatures. The Sex Creatures. That's my new band. Been looking for that. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Derek came over one night because I was like, I really need to go over these songs because I haven't played them in three years. So let's <laughs> make sure I remember this. And then I just kind of <laughs> casually mentioned to him, dude, uh, I've got something new going. You know a bass player that might be interested because that's what we're missing. He yeah. tells me, he's like, well, I've got a bass. I was like, okay. <laughs> well, if you want the gig, you got it. You don't have to audition or anything. I know you're good for it. So <laughs> that kind of completed the band. Uh, or... I didn't think it did, but mm -hmm. I've been writing for months before this, and even you know, in the time I wasn't doing any music, I would still get ideas and write songs, which was weird. Uh, Cold Dark Grave, which was the first one we released, I'd probably actually written in late 2013 or early 2014. And I kind of showed it to the guys, and I had lyrics and all I wrote for it, and I was like, well, I'll tell you what, I'm just going to hook the PA system up and I'll sing it for the time being until we can find somebody. Yeah. Okay, so I start singing and I'm like, I'm a terrible singer, but let's go with this. <laughs> I mean, it's for practice purposes until we yeah. find somebody. That happened. Still didn't find a singer. We start writing new songs. Okay, so I go off and yeah. write a few lines. I was like, whenever we find a singer, I'll give him all this, you know. We never found a singer. <laughs> and at that point, it was time for us to release something. Yeah. So we recorded Cold Dark Grave on electric drums. We mic'd the amps, all that, in my living room. Uh, and then when everybody heard it, they were like, dude, why don't you just keep doing vocals? I was like, because I'm not a singer. <laughs> and they were like, but it fits. And then I'm like, okay, fair enough. It's punk rock. Yeah. I'll give it a shot. And it's really weird for me still to this day, man, because I'm not used to having to do two things at once. That's what I was going to ask you about. Yeah. It is. How hard is that? I kind of write around the music where my vocal flow can go along with the music and the changes in the chords. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I really had to learn how to do. I mean, you know, there's two kinds of lyrical flows to any kind of rock and roll music, I think. You can go with the music or you can go against it. And then sometimes that sounds better because it gives it so much diversity to the sound. But with me, I'm not really able to do that so much mm. because, I, I don't know, maybe it'll come later. Who knows? No, it sounds great. But, you know, that's just kind of how I do everything. I write my lyrics to flow with the music that we've already got established. This album, I, I love how you guys collaborate with Ryan from uh, Cast of Oh, yeah, going back. That's one of my absolute best friends in And the world. you guys did a lyric video for that, too, which is really neat. We did. Yeah. Was he there with you? Because I keep watching him. Like, was he in the same room? No. Because it's, it's shot kind of split up. No, he was, uh, he filmed that one from home. Yeah, okay. And just kind of shot him over to Derek. Derek actually put that whole video together. And I'm oh, glad he did because cool. I never would have had the patience to do that. It's, oh, yeah? Yeah. And we do have a uh, full-on production video coming. It'll be out shortly after the first of the year, hopefully. That video is cool, the lyric video. It is, man. Yeah, it came out really great. Cool. I was really impressed with the way everything looked whenever yeah. I saw it for the first time. I just like how he's just kind of sitting there and kind of just singing. Like yeah. It's different. Oh, yeah. it's, really, it's really cool. That was great. Oh, so what songs do you like best tonight? What, what's your, uh, are you going to have a come out with a single? Sometimes they come back. I love the intro to that. Yeah, yeah, that's a good is one. Is that you that does the very intro? It is. That's awesome. It is. How can, um, how can people get this if they want a copy? 
CD Baby right now uh, has the digital downloads and the copies. We have a big cartel store where you can purchase it directly from us. We'll ship. We're all DIY, so that's everything funny comes straight from us. CD Baby has digital. That's kind of funny. They do, and <laughs> you know, if, if you if you like streaming services, it's going to be on Spotify probably within the next week. iTunes, US, Canada, and UK. What do you guys plan on doing from here? Are you going to play some live shows? and? We've got a couple coming up, and then honestly, October was kind of chaotic. And then uh, we've got two this month. We're actually opening for Doyle from the Misfits at the Masquerade this coming Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. Awesome. That's great. Uh, which is going to be cool. Then we've got another show towards the end of the month. And then after that, it's kind of time to book lightly and start writing album two. Do a follow up. Who yeah. recorded this for you? Was it? That's all James Nation. Yeah, he's awesome. Uh, engineered, produced, mixed, mm -hmm. mastered, everything from top to bottom is him. And this is the second album I've worked on with him and I don't think I can go to anybody else. Uh, and what I was saying was funny is we were talking about the amount of time it took to record Unknown. Five days. Five days. We did this one in four. <laughs> So <laughs> that's four long days. Uh, a couple of them. Yeah. But I mean, we had been playing these songs for so long at this point. There was really nothing left to do but change some things here or there that he could pick out. Like, okay, when you come in for this lead, do a squeal. You know, it was just really adding accents on this one. There was nothing that drastically changed. Yeah. And he keeps everything going good. And like I said, we'd been playing them for so long. It was a lot of the stuff was one take done. Hmm. So. Where can people uh, find you at? They want to Facebook, Instagram, all uh, die nine eight five. Die nine eight five. Yeah, just type it in your search engine, and that's gonna pull that up. Cool. So. Is there anything else you want to cover? Uh not really, man. I appreciate you being uh, bringing me Talk on here. Talk about them pickles and, uh, real fast. You got oh, the pickles. pickles. Yeah, 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 the pickles. Okay. All right, the pickles seem to be a popular topic yeah. as of late. Kelly's Death Pickles did some uh, limited edition labels with our album logo on it. And they're awesome, so hit up Kelly's Death Pickles on Facebook. He's got the regular deals, he's got some <laughs> habanero, which will burn your mouth, and he's got some ghost pepper that will really burn your mouth. But they all taste good. <laughs> it's just, uh, how much punishment do you want to put yourself through? <laughs> Jamie, thank you for being here. Thank you.